Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. I am D, and today we're going to be taking a look at a little demo that's been making big splashes in the community. Um, I came across it on Reddit, and it's gotten a lot of positive feedback, um, and it's called Red Frame. Now, um, Red Frame, the story behind it, uh, there are a couple guys called uh, named Andrew Kagashal and Michael Stevenson. Uh, they got together and formed a two-person uh, small game, stu uh, game company called Basenji Interactive, uh, or Basenji Games, which is based in San Francisco. And um, Red Frame is, um, they're intending it for it to be an exploratory adventure game. Uh, it's currently in development, and they have just released their very first uh, Oculus Rift uh, demo for it and what people are so excited about is basically the graphics in this demo are amazing uh, They have a very uh, a photorealistic quality and they have some kind of special secret process they have for creating these I don't know exactly what it is um, and I haven't actually seen it before so Let's take a look at red frame and see if it's as awesome as people say it is All right, I am in the game and Wow, this is, this just looks amazing. Like, the lighting in here is totally beautiful, and all these textures just look really realistic. Let me go ahead and take a look around. Um, take a look at the fireplace first. Gonna sit right in front of here. Take a seat. Here I am. So yeah, you'll notice um, that the, the fire is not making a flickering effect on these. It's just kind of a static light. So um, that's part of what makes me suspect that I think that um, these really cool lighting effects they have going on are most likely, um, most likely pre-rendered. They probably rendered them uh, with ray tracing, and then they uh, put, those, uh, put the ray trace texture as textures onto these objects. But it really looks amazing. Like that's the same way that um, I mean, and it reminds me a lot of experiences like Mist, which also relied heavily on pre-rendering. Let me stand up and walk around a little bit. See how close I can get to this. So yeah, I can get close to this clock, and it's got a lot of detail on it. I can almost read that text underneath the the number twelve. There's this cool bird over here. And you can start to see the edges of the polygons on the bird model here. So none of these are super um, high polygon models. And that's reflected by the fact that I was able to turn on, I was able to force on all of the anti-aliasing on my video card right up to the max. And I'm still getting a smooth, smooth um, 60 frames a second. I could probably get more of these sync off. And there's some candles. And then we have this painting. And the painting just looks like, 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 I can't even tell if this texture is... Like, this is a very nice high-resolution texture. And I think this is one of the things that this demo does really well, is they have these nice high-resolution textures um, with lots of levels of detail so that you can get in nice and close to it and see plenty of detail in it. And that just gives you a sense when you walk away from it that even when you're seeing it from a distance, that it's still got that detail and you can still get up close to it and really see a lot of detail in it. These books, on the other hand, they're quite blurry. Maybe a little higher res than your typical close-up texture, but um, they could afford to make the give these a higher level of detail up front. Let me see where else I can go. Oh, I didn't notice this picture. It's like a woman with a hat silhouette. Oh, what's this over here? Is that a kind of light switch? Yeah, those are light switches. I can't switch them on because the lighting is fixed. Although I think, like, even though I'm sh pretty sure they're pre-rendering this lighting, um, I think that um, they they can still they could pre-render multiple um, lighting schemes for rooms, so they could easily make it so you can turn the lights on and off, and that would still work uh, as long as there's not too many possibilities to pre-render. And they did just an amazing job with scale. Like, this room looks exactly eight feet tall to me, the normal height for a room. This bed looks like exactly the size of a queen size bed. And I feel like if I laid down on it, I would just fit on it perfectly. Let me turn off the mouse here, get it facing the right way. 
and they paid so much attention to scale because even with the sitting function, like when I'm standing, I feel like I'm standing height. When I'm sitting down, I feel like I'm sitting height. I feel like I'm really sitting on this. And I think scale is something that's so important in VR games, and it's so easy to get wrong. It's one of those things that I think a lot of new VR developers are going to struggle with. Now, here's one of those places, if you look at the lighting, you can see there's some pixelation along the edge of the shadow, and it's not too visible because it's a soft shadow, and soft shadows don't show up the pixelation very strongly. Um, but I, I, you can definitely tell it's a, a low resolution pre-rendered shadow, and I, um, and you know, they, they might have to increase the shadow resolution a little bit, or the texture resolution rather, when they get to um, the consumer uh, dev kit. One thing I, I really love about lighting in the rift, like I mentioned before, is the fact that you have um, pupil dilation inside the rift. So when I'm looking at like a bright light area like this, and then I turn towards a dark area, like this hallway, in a, in a few seconds my eyes naturally dilate and I can see the hallway better. Now this isn't going to be as nice on the uh, dev kit as it will be on the... Um, on the final version, which should have an OLED display. Like, Crystal Cove has an OLED display, and this would look really nice and black on that. On the dev kit, it looks more kind of grayish. I can still see the black, the backlight bleeding through. I can't quite see what this picture is here. It's kind of a little bit too dark. Um, but I think with the, the final consumer rift, things like this, where you're going to be able to be in a dim room and still see the details because of your pupil dilation, and then you could step outside and suddenly be in a daylit scene and feel it temporarily blinded as your, eye, as your pupils constrict. And I think that would just make it a really cool um, and realistic experience. But yeah, I think that this demo just does a lot to demonstrate how you can make uh, realistic interior environments by relying on soft shadows and having, um, and having this pre-rendered lighting. I think that's something everybody can do. It gives it a very mist type of feeling. When I start to walk around this walk-in closet, this is a really nice closet. I wish I had a closet this big. Um, oh, and wow, look at how like the light catches on the edge of these... Um, the edge of these coat hangers, and the shadow gets cast down there and spills across these surfaces. And that is, that just shows like here and how like the, the coat hangers that are farthest away from me cast this really soft shadow against the opposite wall. And the ones that are closest to that light bulb that are lighting it um, cast a sharper shadow. And that kind of, that kind of amazing lighting just is, makes for such a great experience. And, um, I think those light bulbs are actually supposed to be on. They look like they're off. That was probably an error. Um, so yeah, they say they're going to make this an adventure game. And like with this, this cool mu this cool kind of soft piano music they got going on and these really dim, um, mysterious environments, I can imagine this being like a game where you're searching for clues and you're like maybe opening this up and taking an object out of it adding it to your inventory, maybe there would be a cool voiceover. Maybe there would be characters walking in who you could talk to. I don't know. I can only imagine what you could do with this. Um, it's not totally clear how you would adapt this lighting, this pre-rendered lighting scheme, to a situation where you have moving objects like other people. Um, probably the easiest thing is just to not have that. You can build a narrative that's totally by yourself. Um, but there are probably ways to do it. Like you could probably just use um, point light sources that are only uh, rendered by um, only rendered when they when they come upon a moving object. So you could designate certain objects in your scene as moving and have them use a simpler lighting scheme, and they wouldn't look quite as nice as these static objects. But that's okay. This ship is a great demonstration how you get the shadows just casting down from up above. And you can see the shadow of the shales fa the sails falling on the deck there. Take a close look at this dog here. What's up, dog? Yeah, this is a great demonstration of a high-res texture. You can just see so much detail in this picture. And I think when something covers your whole eyes like this, you really have to worry about having a lot of detail when you're up close against something and putting some work into having that level of detail. 
um, especially if the high-res consumer rift. I think you're going to want to make it basically so that when you walk up against something, you have enough resolution for just half of the object to fill the entire resolution of the display. There's a cool map over there. I can read the large labels on this map. I cannot read, um, like I can't read the stuff inside that um, inside that logo down at the bottom, and I can't read the labels on Antarctica, um, or I can just almost barely read them. So that gives you an idea of the resolution I'm looking at inside the Rift. You can probably read a bit more than I can in the 1080p video. Um, the Rift inside is only 128800, as I've mentioned before. But yeah, I just feel like, like, I can imagine this being a great multiplayer experience too. Just like inviting a friend over to your virtual apartment for dinner and having them sit in that chair by the fireplace with you. And you just sit and talk and, and their voice could come from there and you have, and, and they can like, maybe they would have uh, position sensors on their hands so they could motion with their hands and look at you. And I think that would be really cool. Um, so yeah, that's Red Frame. Uh, keep an eye out for it. I'm sure they'll be building lots of uh, more cool environments in this game, and it'll be really cool to see what the final product looks like. I'll definitely be picking it up. And with, uh, and that's all for today. Everybody have a great every day.